Hello, everyone. I'm Coburg advocate Kirsten Schatz here today with a conversation from the Capitol with Representative Jenny Wilford. We're here to talk about some important legislation that Representative Wilford sponsored this past session and to get to know her a bit. Uh, Representative Wilford sponsored two of the bills that Coburg backed this past session, including measures to tackle air pollution by cutting energy waste and saving people money in our homes and by addressing the ozone pollution coming from the oil and gas industry and new permitted sources of this harmful pollution in our state. Representative Wilford, thanks so much for taking the time and joining me today. Of course, thanks for having me. Before we dive in to talk about those bills, will you please share a little bit about what inspired you to become a legislator? Of course. So I sat on North Carolina City Council for five years, and it was an incredible experience because people, um, my the people, my neighbors would come to me and with an issue, and um, I got to work to try and figure out what the what the solution was, and it was just a really intimate experience, um, one that I loved and I learned so much um, while I was serving. However, there were a lot of issues that the my residents would bring to me that I couldn't solve from the city level. Um, and while I did certainly absolutely everything I could, you know, I, I couldn't solve um, issues that old, our older adults were experiencing. I couldn't solve um, the, the air quality issue. You know, certainly we were doing everything we could um, between building a all electric new um, city hall without fossil fuel backup, um, creating an electric vehicle plan, um, as well as um, energy efficiency goals. But I wasn't able to solve that problem as well as a number of other ones, everything from, um, you know, overdose deaths in our parks to, um, you know, folks being food insecure. And so um, that's really what inspired me to become a lawmaker was just seeing what's happening on the local level and, and understanding it intimately and wanting to take the take that fight to the Capitol and see if I couldn't solve some problems for my community. Great. Thank you for sharing that. So now that you are a state legislator, what are some of your favorite parts of the job? I mean, I love that I get to kind of nerd out on policy and on different ways to solve salute, um, different problems. And it's really cool when a neighbor can come to me and say, you know, my my mom's been applying for lots of jobs and she's an older adult, but she's not getting interviews. And I can work with my colleagues and craft legislation that aims to solve that problem. And I know that if my neighbor's mom is facing that issue, that there are probably a lot of other Coloradans that are having that same issue. And so it, to me, it's just really incredible to to get to play that role of of solving problems for my six six million neighbors. Love it. Well, two of the bills that you sponsored last session, House Bill 1161 and House Bill 1294, offered solutions to Colorado's air quality problems. Why is fighting for clean air important to you personally? Yeah, it's it's personal to me because I guess for a couple of reasons. One is I have two little kids. Uh, my daughter's now two. My son is eight. And, you know, during during the summer months when we'd get the ozone air quality alerts, I was genuinely concerned about my kids playing outside, worried that, you know, the the poor air quality is going to impact their developing lungs. And, you know, any, any parent will tell you, any parent with little kids in particular will tell you that if you don't get your kids outside and get those wiggles out, nobody's having a good day. Um, and so just recognizing that, you know, as a parent, I'm I'm tired of getting those little alerts that pop up and, and say that the air quality is not safe for my kids. Um, you know, secondly, my um, grandfather who um, spent, you know, a, a long career in the Air Force um, passed away in February of lung cancer. And I can't help but think that our poor air quality had something to do with it, especially when the um, American Lung Association gave three cities in Colorado you know, an F for air quality and said that we're one of, you know, three out of um, three cities in Colorado are, are at the top 25 worst in the nation for air quality. And um, that's just not a legacy that I think that we should leave to our kids. And I don't want to keep expecting someone else to solve the problem. And so I'm committed um, to figuring out what the solution is um, and committed to bringing people together to to determine that solution and, and improve our air quality because 
frankly, we shouldn't be out of compliance with the Federal Clean Air Act. That's that's something that Colorado is known for, our blue sky, beautiful days. And when you get here and you realize that our air quality is trash, that's just really disappointing and we need to do something about it. Absolutely. I'm so sorry for your loss and thank you for your leadership on this critical issue for all of us in the state. In a minute, I'll explain a little bit more about what these two new laws will do. But first, will you tell us what were some of the inspirations for these two bills? How did they come about? Yeah, of course. So on um, House Bill 1161, this is really focused on um, improving efficiency and um, decreasing emissions from appliances. And you know, this one really came about from the reality that my my background was um, advocacy in the environmental space, and in particular on buildings and energy efficiency. And um, so, you know, the policy piece there is something that I'm passionate about, but the other piece really came from community and that while I was a city council member, we um, held a energy challenge um, and within our entire city. And the intention was to see who could save the most energy based on the wards. And my my ward won. Um, and we, we took out energy kits so that folks can make the shift from their older light bulbs to LED light bulbs. Um, and we also talked about ways to save energy with appliances. And one of the things that kept coming up was folks talking about how old their appliances are um, and just the recognition that like there's there's a lot of education that needs to be done around, you know, appliances, around heat pumps, around, you know, high fish, high efficiency furnaces um, and there was this recognition that, you know, if we can help the market adjust, that folks aren't going to have to worry about whether or not they're getting the most efficient appliance. They're just going to get the most efficient appliance, which is ultimately going to save them money. Um, so that's the inspiration for the first bill. Um, the second bill, um, House Bill 1294, which was the pollution protection pollution, I'm sorry, I'm going to mess it up, but the pollution protection measures um, really came from community. Um there was a group that started meeting and talking about the concept of um, really working to bring the front um, front range into ozone attainment. And they spent time brainstorming and, and thinking through what exactly would that look like and put together another uh, a number of concepts and um, spent some time doing some stakeholding and making sure that folks understood the direction that they were growing. And so I fortunately joined um, the, the legislation as a first um, first term lawmaker. Um, and it was it was already crafted, but it definitely aligned with my values and the concerns of my community, because when I was knocking doors, asking for people's vote and support, I was hearing about air quality. I was hearing about, you know, again, those those air quality alerts and the frustration that, you know, our air is just not good to breathe. So I felt like that that was a um a clear the, that was marching orders from my community to go out and do something about it. Excellent. Well, like you said, House Bill 1294 aimed to address ozone pollution from the oil and gas and related sectors, as well as consider reforms to the state's process of permitting new sources of air pollution. And it will also provide more avenues for communities impacted by air pollution to make their voices heard. Another thing that HB 1294 did was set up an interim legislative committee to dig in on ozone. So I'm curious what you're hoping to see come out of that committee work this summer and fall. Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, it's important to recognize um, that the conversation around House Bill 1294 this session was a really tough one. Um, you know, one where I feel like you know, industry was pitted against folks that want clean air and a lot of you know, um, conversation around, well, do you want clean air or do you want a healthy economy? And do you want a good job that pays, you know, a, a good wage or do you want clean air? And I just think those are false choices. Like those aren't, those aren't, those aren't things that we have to decide between. We can have them both. And so when I think about our work ahead of us um, in the interim committee, my hope is that all of our stakeholders come to the table, come to the table in a in a way that is reasonable and is willing to work, right? Because something has to change. We can't continue to go down this path of, you know, um, 
allowing additional pollution in our communities and just expecting that things are going to magically get better. We have to we have to move towards compliance. There is simply no other path. And so we my hope is that folks come to the table ready to work um, and ready to build a solution that we can pass in the form of legislation in, in 2024. So House Bill 1161 will help cut air pollution as well and cut energy waste and save consumers money by establishing or updating efficiency and pollution standards for lots of different home appliances. I know I was particularly excited about the new low nitrogen oxide or NOx standards for furnaces and water heaters, since that should directly impact the levels of harmful ozone in our region. Um, the new law will also phase out light bulbs that contain toxic mercury in favor of non-toxic bulbs that are even more efficient and can last twice as long. So I'm curious, Representative Wilfer, do you have any favorite tips for saving energy at home that you like to share with others? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously, um, you know, when it when it's time to update your appliance um, appliances, you know, think about um, consider getting a heat pump. Um, that's a big one. I know that. Um, a couple of years ago when our furnace went out, we upgraded and did a heat pump. We don't have a fossil fuel backup. We have electric um, resistance strip heating um, in, and I don't know that we've ever used it in the years that we've had a heat pump. Um, and so I would say one, consider going electric. And the number two, is um, talk to your kids if you know about energy efficiency because um, they those those little humans tend to leave a lot of lights on um, when and water running. running. And water running, I'm like, you can turn the water off between brushing your teeth and rinsing. Um, but we we spend a lot of time um, talking to my son about different things that he can do um, to help us save money and, and save energy. Um, and he, he's become a little bit um, like the the energy monitor in our house. And he, he will follow us around and remind us that we need to turn off the lights because he's doing his part. So I would say just make energy efficiency something that the entire family does um, and talk about regularly because we need to we need to normalize these things because the greenest kilowatt hour is the one that we don't use. I completely agree. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for sharing all of that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap up? I don't think so. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. We appreciate your leadership and your insight on these important issues. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Thank you.